Well, this is great. It's looking really good. But I'm going to drop in again a point container, and this is going to be my input PT grid. And you know, the nice thing about the parametric system is that you can easily work with this grid, right? Or just replace the grid and have the whole thing update here. Excellent. Now, since we already looked at how to use our point attractor, why don't we just go ahead and say, instead of just using this constant dimension of one, we could use the values from our point attractor. But these values are between 0 and 1, right? So that means that those values are not going to be very helpful to us if we're trying to move, for instance, um, our design components um, or actually move our grid up um, a variable amount to populate our design component. So if I just hook this up to this, you'll see that it does change the um, the uh, overall um, depth of this component. And if I were to take and multiply, for instance, these values, I could very quickly and easily um, increase the overall height. So I could say um, maybe you know four times as high. If I turn this dial up, you'll see, all right, based on the distance to this attractor now, our pleated components, our folded components are adapting completely to that context. Which is really, really quite easy to do. I'm going to save this document as. Our variable 3D, right? Because now these guys are actually um, changing in terms of their depth based on that attractor. And just, you know, to be clear, the um, attractor here does not have to be one point, right? If you wanted, you could actually have, for instance, multiple points. I can come over here and, and say I want one here, 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 and just set all of those. And I could bring those over here if I wanted. All right? And you can see that the whole system will adapt based on those points. And if I just come over here and I bake, Uh, that seems to have a rip in it because uh, it looks like there was a problem with that component. But um, but you can see it largely over here that this is all continuous and all right. Yeah, so some of these guys uh, were ignored whenever it hit baked. So I have to send a little note to Raja and let her know that there's a, a bug there. Fantastic. All right, well, what if, for instance, you want to be able to populate your components onto a surface, right? Well, lucky for you, uh, that's even easier. So I'm going to save this as yet another new file. All right. So, I'm no longer going to need this grid. 
Because what I want to do is figure out how to populate a grid onto a surface. Now, I don't know that I'm going to be using all of this anymore, really much of any of this, because of the fact that once I have my surface grid, it's as easy as just inputting a grid on one surface, a grid on another, and then filling in the space between the two. Now, I'm going to make a surface um, just by drawing, uh, maybe I'll use a helix, uh, so I'm just going to use my helix component. Uh, right here, just type in helix and then move out. And you can see that as I, I change this, you can see that the, the edge of that surface is changing. I'm just going to bring this guy out a little bit. Um, hit enter. And you'll see that this is in fact a um, a three-dimensional curve here. So I'm just going to mirror this guy over and just give myself a little bit of room. And I will loft. Excellent. So this surface here, right, which is um, a loft between these two helix curves, is, um, you can see, changing uh, in its width um, as well as its height as we move along. And I'm just going to copy this guy vertically. I'm just going to make a copy of him like right here. Now, if you notice this gumbel right here, I can easily start to bend and, and kind of change the uh, the surface um, just by doing something like this, by moving the scale up and down. All right, so you can see here it's getting deeper, right? Here it's more shallow, here it's getting deeper, right? The idea being that we just have two um, surfaces that we can start to put grids on. Here's this is still our design motif right here, so why don't I just bring them over so we can see this um, over here by where we're going to use it. Now, knowing that we have two surfaces, um, again, references, right? These are our reference surfaces. I'll just drop those guys into Grasshopper. Now, I'm going to do that by setting one surface. and then grabbing another container for my other surface. So this would be my surface one, surface two. And back at paneling tools, if we go to the grid, you'll see that there is an object just just says surface domain number, and it's really straightforward stuff. You just connect your surface. Now you have a grid. And we copy and paste for our other surface. Perfect, now we have another grid. We're gonna need sliders for U and V. And remember, this is a great trick. You can say two, to less than 6, less than 20, for instance. And this will say the minimum is 2, the current value is 20, or sorry, the upper value is 20, but the current value is 6. And I'll just call this U. This will be my V. Just drop this right down to here. I'm sharing these sliders so that they have the same number of points. And see if I change that or if I change this, right? And then I can just drop that guy right to here. Excellent. 
now you can see that this is updating based on the, the, the surfaces, right? Now if I were to uh, bake this, you can see that this is all changing and updating based on those surfaces.